Hey everybody, this is Dream, and we have a nice uh, nine-game slate here for uh, DraftKings for Major League Baseball. Before I get into the video, I uh, just want to shout out the Patreon members. Thank you guys for uh, joining. And if you want to join Patreon, one of the perks you get is I post, uh, I get you uh, access to the spreadsheet that I write up for the video that I do. And most of the time I do a little writes up for each of the pitchers. And sometimes I do it for the for batters as well. But I usually just do it for pitchers most of the time. And just give a little like uh, thought about each one and, the, and then the like the game itself that they're pitching in. And so if you're interested in that, then make sure to uh, check out the Patreon in the link in the description below. Um, and also, uh, you could also join uh, the uh, Discord. That's free. You can just join Discord and hang out with uh, the guys that have joined here. And we talk about uh, the games that are coming up and all, and all the different slates and all the different uh, things on fa Daily Fantasy. So feel free to jump in there if you want to. Uh, feel free to uh, like this video, and if you don't mind, hit the f subscribe button as well. That really helps the video out. And with that said, let's go and get into the players. All right, so first of all, I'm going to give you the stacks, I think, for this particular slate. Uh, we have the New York Mets. We have the uh, Minnesota Twins. And uh, let's see here. Are they on it? Where are they? At? Yep, they're there. And then the Dodgers. I think those are the three best stacks. And so we have a lot of good uh, players available in these particular stats, as you can see. Um, and so let's go ahead and get into the pitchers I do like. And so let's go ahead and, and do that. Let's get back over here. Um, boop. I say. Like, so the first pitcher that I like is uh, Shohei Otani, obviously. Uh, he's been pitching extremely well lately. Uh, if you look at his stats against Seattle, um, well, it's not going to show it here. But uh, in eight of the last nine games, he's had over 20 fantasy points, including one game uh, versus Seattle with 26 and a half points. And so I think he's in a really good spot here where he has some upside and he gets the strikeouts that we want. Obviously, uh, you know, he's been averaging a uh, decent amount of strikeouts too. Again, the stats on here don't really represent correctly because he's also a hitter. But he's got 188 strikeouts on the season, so... The only issue with him really is that the Angels don't always win, or a lot of times don't win when he pitches, even though he's a really good pitcher. Uh, the next guy I really like is going to be, um, let's see here, Aaron Nola for Philadelphia against uh, Atlanta. Now, Atlanta is a pretty tough team, and they are playing pretty well right now, So, but he has been pretty good against them. He's averaged uh, about eight strikeouts a game against them, and he's been pretty good lately. Though he has been inconsistent, this is his problem, is that he has good games and bad games, which is why his record is 9-11. and uh, Even though they have a pretty good team, he's just inconsistent, and you can see this in his, in his stats. You know, he has games where he doesn't get the strikeouts, and sometimes he does get the strikeouts, but he gives up a bunch of runs. And But in other games, he's just like an ace, so it's, you know, he's been all over the place this season. So I think he's somebody you have to take in consideration, because he's played three games against Atlanta, he's had one good one... Uh, one great one and one bad one, and uh, I think he's somebody that's worth taking a look at. Uh, another, another guy I really like is Zach Gallen for Arizona against San Diego. Um, he's been very good the last seven games, and we'll sh show you that here. 30, 30, 30, 20, 40, 30, 30. Uh, but uh, before that, he wasn't quite as good, and in two games against San Diego this season, he's had negative two points and 26 points. So he's very kind of all over the place. Uh, but he does have some upside in this matchup. I do think Arizona is going to have a good game from the from a hitting perspective. So I look for him as a potential guy that can get the win in this matchup, which always obviously gives you some bonus points. Uh, the, you know, really the only big issue that he has is the strikeouts. He doesn't always get as many strikeouts as you as you want, but he still has the ability. So it's just a matter of good matchups, and he is in a pretty good matchup here. Uh, another guy I like is going to be uh, Chris Bassett. Uh, for the Mets against Pittsburgh. And, uh, well, let's just say that the Pittsburgh Pirates are not really playing very hard. There's a funny video going around from the game today where uh, the, the third baseman for Pittsburgh was literally just eating, uh, pulling a, pulling some uh, sunflower seeds out of his pocket while a play was going on, while a dude was rounding third base. He wasn't even taking the time to care about the game at all. And so... Uh, it seems like Pittsburgh is you know, all but thrown in the towel as a team, and so he definitely has some tremendous upside in this matchup. 
just be aware that he's been pretty inconsistent lately. And so he, but he does have big upside against Pittsburgh specifically. Uh, then uh, we're going to get down to some cheaper options. Uh, one of them is going to be Julio Urias for the Dodgers. Um, he's in a nice plus matchup against San Francisco, and he's been good against them four times. He's averaging 25 points a game, and I think his worst one was 23. So he's been really, really good. And he's only had two bad games since the start of July on the season. And so, you know, he's also getting a lot of wins because um, because of the uh, of the uh, team he's on that helps him get wins. And he, you know, sticks in the game as a result as well. So I think he's in a great spot. You can see that he's averaging 24 for the last 10 games. He's really only had given up a few runs and stuff. So uh, I, I really like what he's doing. And I think he's in a great spot to be a good player. Uh, secondary option, a uh, secondary pitcher, and he's, you know, th only 9200 bucks, which sometimes it's hard to find super cheap op options on, uh, you know, cheaper options rather than the top tier ones on, on DraftKings. Uh, another guy I like here is also uh, George Kirby. Um, he has a good matchup against the Angels. Really, the only thing he has to deal with is Otani and Trout. Everybody else is mostly, he's capable of dis dim dismantling in three games against the Angels this season, he has 27, 19, and 17 points. He's averaging 21. Uh, he's not quite getting as many strikeouts as we would like necessarily, especially with the risk of trout and stuff, but he's still in a really good spot here. The only thing with him is he's been kind of inconsistent as well, which is kind of the reality of pretty much almost all the pitchers on this particular slate that are good. And so uh, you do have to be a little bit aware of that, but he's definitely in a plus matchup against the Angels. Um, so that's what I have for the pitchers. We have a lot of good options there, and you can mix and match the ones you like the most and then build your lineup out from there. Um, at catcher, uh, my first guy is Gary Sanchez. Um, he's been hitting not as great as we would like, but he's still in a good spot for Minnesota against Cleveland, and I tend to like him when there's not a whole lot of good value on the board. He's somebody to take a look at. Another value option is Austin Barnes if he starts. Um, he's somebody that I always like to use when he does start. He's averaging 10 fantasy points a game and three home runs in the last 10. So if he plays, then he's somebody I'm probably going to use. Uh, but another guy that's cheap that you could you could uh, choose to look at is uh, McCann uh, for the Mets. Uh, mostly for a Mets stack, you could add him in. Um, and he's in a plus matchup here against Atlanta or against Pittsburgh, rather. Excuse me, I don't know. I said Atlanta. Uh, but anyway, he's they're trying to deal with Atlanta, trying to get to them, or you know, trying to keep the division. But anyhow, he's a good option as well. Uh, he's just not a big home run hitter anymore, but he's still somebody that can get hits, and so he's kind of a good little safety valve. Occasionally, he has you know a ten or twelve point game, so I think he's in a pretty good spot. And then uh, for to pay up. We obviously have Will Smith for the Dodgers, who's in a very nice plus matchup here. Obviously, uh, not a hitter's park, but he can still hit the ball well here. He's averaging eight fantasy points a game uh, the last ten. And then also JT Romuto uh, for uh, uh, Philly against a really bad pitcher for uh, JT Romuto uh, for uh, Atlanta. Uh, Ordozzi, the pitcher for Atlanta, has really only had one good game against the opposition since joining Atlanta. And uh, in that capacity, that was against, uh, I believe it was against uh, Colorado or Pittsburgh, one of those. It was one of the really bad teams, and so it might have been Oakland, actually. But regardless of who it was, uh, Philly's a better team than the, that team, and uh, he should, and but he's not going to do very well probably in this particular matchup. So I, I do like some of the Philly players, and he's been really good against Atlanta, too. He's had two home runs in 13 games, averaging 8.5 fantasy points a game. Uh, at first base, uh, we have some good value options available. We have Spencer Steer uh, for Cincinnati. Um, he's been playing pretty well. as a He's not getting up, you know, home runs, really, but he's hitting the ball pretty good. He's getting hits every game, which is, you know, most games at least. So that's what we like. And he's super cheap, and so he's a nice little uh, kind of cheap option if you just need it at this position. Usually first base is pretty extravagant, but it's really not that deep today. So he's somebody could use here, but you can also use him at third base. <coughs> Excuse me. Jose Miranda is my next guy for Minnesota. I really like Minnesota today. 
Uh, he's averaging 8.5 the last 10, including two home runs, and I think he's in a great spot, and he's not too expensive. Uh, Josh Naylor is another guy that's in a great spot for Cleveland. Um, he should have uh, plus upside here. He hasn't been hitting the ball quite as well as he does, but uh, he has hit one home run the last 10, and I think he's due for another. He's starting to hit the ball again right now and starting to heat up a little bit. Uh, and then Guriel for Houston. Uh, Houston's in a pretty good spot here against Oakland. Now, just to, uh, to talk about Oakland's pitching. So Irving, Irvin is their pitcher, and he's been pretty good against against Houston this year and all the starts. So it's not as, like, Houston's not as stackable as I normally would think they would be against Oakland. So just be aware of that. And uh, I do think that they're definitely worth taking a look at, especially like Al uh, Jordan Alvarez and even Gurriel. But they do have a little bit of risk because he's been really good against them for some reason. And then we have uh, Pete Alonso. Uh, he's obviously pretty expensive uh, for the Mets. I mean, the Mets look really solid in this particular matchup. And he's been hitting the ball. 9.4, 333 with three home runs the last 10. And then finally, Freddie Freeman. Uh he just, he's been teeing off on people. 12 fantasy points a game, 395, four home runs the last 10. Just having really solid games every game. And we definitely like that. We got a lot of Dodgers to take a look at here because it's a great, uh, great matchup for them. Uh, then we have at second base, we have Brendan Donovan uh, for the St. Louis. I really like him in this particular matchup. Uh, he doesn't always, Brendan Donovan. I don't always like him because he's not a big home run hitter, but he does hit the ball pretty well, and he's hitting 294 the last 10, eight fantasy points a game. He's even hit two home runs, which is which is cool, uh, but he really doesn't hit the home runs all that much, but he still gets hits and stuff, and he brings people home to get on base, which we definitely like. Uh, Jake Cronenworth for San Diego is another guy I like. He's probably one of the only guys on San Diego that I really like in this particular slate just because he's hitting the ball pretty well, scoring eight fantasy points a game, had some home runs, and that's what we like to see out of him. Uh, and then uh, Diaz for Houston. He's also somebody I like against Irvin. If you decide to go with the Houston stack, he might be somebody you'll like. 294, two home runs, uh, 7.2 fantasy points a game. Uh, then we have Josh Rojas, Josh Rojas uh, for Arizona. Also can play second or third base. He's averaging almost eight fantasy points a game. He's kind of due for another home run. And so I think he might try to sneak one in this game. And then uh, Jeff McNeil uh, for the Mets. I really like him, though he's gotten a little bit more expensive. He's hitting 342, 8.7 the last 10 games. Not a big home run hitter, but he's still somebody that gets on base, and that's kind of what the Mets are going to need to do tomorrow. And then finally, Jose Altuve. I mean, he's just hitting the ball pretty solid, and he uh, averaging 8.2 fantasy points a game. He's kind of due for another home run, to be honest, but I think he's in a good spot here against Oakland. Uh, then at third base, uh, we have Spencer Steer, who I already mentioned, and then Gio Yoshella, uh for Minnesota uh, against Plinkenton. Uh, he's been hitting 378, 7.3 fantasy points a game. That's super awesome, and he's just been pretty consistent getting hits game to game, so I really like what he's been doing lately. And then if we look at the next uh, guy, we have, uh, sorry, I lost my spot, uh, Brennan Donovan, who I already mentioned, it's Eduardo Escobar for the Mets. He's in a nice little plus matchup, and he's hitting 400 for the last uh, 10 games. He had another 11-point game yesterday, and he's just been hitting the ball pretty well. And so I think he's somebody you got to take a look at. Uh, and then uh, Josh Rojas, who I already mentioned. Kyle Farmer is another guy I like here uh, for Cincinnati against St. Louis. Um, he's been hitting the ball pretty good. Uh, 7.8, 324 last 10 games, including three home runs. And then finally, last but not least at this position, uh, Josh Turn or, sorry, Justin Turner. Um, mixing words together. I'm a little bit dyslexic there. So Justin Turner, uh, he has been absolutely crushing the ball. 12.4 fantasy points a game. 324, obviously he's pretty expensive, but if you can afford him, then he's definitely going to be somebody that you want to want in this plus matchup for do the Dodgers. Uh, Carl at shortstop, we have Carlos uh, Correa. Oops, Correa. Uh, for Minnesota, a guy who has been absolutely just smashing the ball. 13 fantasy points a game, 405 batting average. Five home runs in the last ten games. What more do you want? I mean, my goodness. Uh, then uh, we look at uh, Willie uh, Adames. Willie Adames from Milwaukee. He's also been hitting the ball pretty well. <laughs> 351, 12 fancy points a game and three home runs. This position, this position is crazy. Uh, Jeremy Pena. 
uh, is actually starting to hit the ball pretty good, too. He's averaging 8.6 last 10 games, including two home runs. He finally got out of a slump. And then uh, we have Ahmad Rosario for Cleveland, uh, who is averaging about 7 and 256 the last 10. Not quite as good, but he can save you a little bit of money off of those other guys. And then Lindor uh, for the Mets. I really like him as well. He's averaging 10 fantasy points a game with three home runs. And then finally, the Dodger, Trey Turner. Uh, which might be the hottest player right now on this slate, uh, averaging 12 fantasy points a game, 300, uh, getting lots of hits, getting doubles, triples, home runs, stolen bases, doing a little bit of everything. I uh, really like what he's doing, and he's definitely going to be somebody I would prefer to get in my lineup if I can afford to. Uh, then in the outfielders, uh, so we have Jake McCarthy, uh, who's been hitting the ball pretty well lately. I really like his uh, production, 385 over the last 10 games, including a home run, 12 fantasy points a game. A uh, little bit tougher matchup, but somebody I think you have to, that's almost becoming matchup proof in, a, in his own way. Uh, then Oscar Gonzalez for Cleveland, he's averaging 12 fantasy points a game for the last 10, including four home runs. He's playing really well, uh, and I think he's in a nice plus matchup against uh, Minnesota. And then uh, we have uh, Quan for uh, Cleveland as well, Stephen Quan. Uh, he doesn't really get home runs, but he gets steals and gets hits, and that's what we need here. Uh, his batting average is dropping a little bit, but he's still getting the fantasy points, and that's what we need here, especially because he gets steals. It helps. Uh, Acuna is a guy I like against uh, Philadelphia. Now, this is a tough matchup for Acuna against Nola, but he's finally starting to feel good, and he's hitting the ball pretty well as of the last few games, and so I look for him to continue that and get some more home runs. Uh, then Kyle Schwerber. Schwerber for Philly. Uh, he's got a nice little plus matchup against Atlanta. He's hitting, his batting average is low, but he's still hitting eight fantasy points a game. He hit a home run yesterday, and I think he's got some opportunity now because he's starting to get hit, starting to hit the ball pretty well as of late the last few games, and so I think he's starting to get going, and it's a good matchup for him to get going against. Uh, then Brendan Nemo, I mean, my goodness, he's averaging 9.3 fantasy points a game in a home run. He's been playing really well, and he also just likes to you know, score points on Pittsburgh, and so he's definitely somebody you got to take a look at. Um, and then, uh, um, Aldemi, uh, Aldem, oops, Diaz for, uh, sorry, I already mentioned him, I'm sorry, uh, for Houston, I don't know how to say his first name, but, uh, then Jeff McNeil, uh, who I already mentioned as well, uh, TJ Friedel is a cheap option at here for Cincinnati against St. Louis that so you can, uh, get in here. Now, his batting average hasn't been great lately, but he's still hitting the ball pretty good, and he's got a plus matchup in this particular situation. And the same goes for uh, J uh, Jake Fraley, uh, who I actually like a little bit more than I like Friedel, but he's pretty inexpensive and a guy that you can definitely uh, uh, put in here if you, def if you definitely need to. Uh, one guy I really like, too, is, My is Michael Harris. Now, his price has come up a lot unfortunately, but he's averaging 10 fantasy points a game, 359 average. And then finally, it's Kyle Tucker uh, for Houston. Uh, he's been hitting the ball well, too. Not quite as good as Jordan Alvarez, but he's hitting the ball 312 fantasy points a game. Now, there's three guys that are hitting, that are over 6,000 points that you can take a look at, Trout, Alvarez, and Judge. If I had to rank them, I would put Alvarez, Judge, then Trout for this particular game, uh, but these games. But overall, I think any of them could potentially go off for home runs. I didn't really include them to break them down, but I, they're all hitting the ball extremely well. And so they're all home run threats every time they come up to bat. Alvarez hit three home runs yesterday. Trout hit one, and I don't think Judge did, if I remember correctly. But he's been hitting them every couple of games, so and he's scoring a crazy amount of points. So either way... You can you couldn't go wrong with any three. Uh, I might try to make some funky lineup where I hit I put all three of them in the lineup to see what happens. That might be something interesting to do. Heck, if you can kind of come up with one that you think might work, feel free to leave that in the comments below so we can see it and see what uh, other people think about it. With that said, uh, thank you guys for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I think this slate's gonna be a lot of fun. I think it's a really solid slate. So uh, you know, let me know who you use or what players you like. If, if there's any player I left out that you like, uh, make sure to join the Discord. We're having a lot of fun in there. So come join it and check out the, you know, we talk about lineups and stuff like that. So come say hi and have a nice day, guys.